So this video will include some information about chest tubes. So one of the main reasons you might want to use a chest tube is for a pneumothorax. And the chest tube is typically inserted to remove either air or fluid from um, a collapsed lung. This image just shows you a couple different ways as to where you would insert it. It's going to be inserted through in between the ribs um, into that intercostal space. And if the chest tube is up higher, it is typically to remove air. And if it is lower, it is typically um, to remove uh, fluid or blood. There are other types of tubes, um, not like we're going to talk about today, but ones that you might see a patient more at home with. And that might be the Heimlich drain valve. And these are going to be for patients who are stable, might be for patients with recurrent pneumothorax. Sometimes you'll see them with patients who um, maybe have lung cancer, who have a lot of fluid buildup in the lung. So you can see them for um, those different reasons, but we'll mainly focus on the large chest tube system that you would see in the, in the healthcare system. So when we look at this chest tube drainage system, there are water seals and there are dry suction. What I have here today is a water seal chest tube. So you can see here, it's gonna show where you're programmed to how many um, centimeters of water it's programmed to. Down in here will be the water chamber, and uh, we'll talk about that in just a few seconds. And then over here is the drainage system. So this is where you're gonna be recording the output of the patient each shift. So um, at the end of your shift, let's say there's only 20, um, the later you would mark 20, put your date and time, the next shift would come in and, and let's say it was at 100, they would subtract 20 from 100 and it would have been 18 from that shift. And you would continue to record that um, um, on here and as well as in your input and output. So your role um, as a nurse, you've got a couple different things you have to do. Is for one, you've got to monitor for bubbling in the water seal chamber. So there should not be any bubbling in this chamber except with coughing, um, exhalation. Um, you can see it kind of titling when they're breathing, but otherwise there should not be any bubbling in this system. You're always gonna be monitoring for any leaks, and so leaks can, be, can happen anywhere from here all the way to the patient. And sometimes you will see um, extensions put on here. So you might see longer tubing put on here, and these will be covered with tape. We wanna make sure that all those extensions are covered with tape to ensure that there aren't any water leaks. You also make sure it's not kinked. It can get kinked sometimes in the side of the bed, uh, in, this, in the rail, so you wanna make sure that that doesn't happen. This needs to stay upright at all times, and so there is this little lever on the bottom that will help keep it from tipping over. There are also these on here, which can be attached to the bed as another um, way to just make sure it doesn't get knocked over. And during transport, we want to make sure that we don't let it get knocked over either. So we would never like lay this on the side of the bed. Um, it should be hanging on the side of the bed, bed rails while they're, they're transporting. And we never clamp it during transport either. So you would never clamp this. The only time this would ever get clamped would be as if the provider was thinking maybe it was time to discontinue it and they want to see how the patient tolerated it. So they might ask you to clamp it for 15 minutes, something like that. But otherwise, we would never ever, ever clamp that. So you as a nurse, not only are you marking the I and O that comes out of here, but you're looking at the color. Um, you know, what color are you expecting? Are you getting the color that you are expecting? Is it bloody? Is it serosanguinous? Is it serous? What, what is the reason they have the chest tube and what are you watching for? Um, if they're not expecting you to have fluid drainage, then you would not have anything um, in there. Um, the dressing, there will be a dressing at the chest tube site and you'll have to look at your orders and your hospital protocol to see how you have that changed and how often, but typically it's not changed for the first 24 hours. So you're gonna do a lot of good respiratory assessment with this patient. You're gonna be listening to their lung sounds throughout. You're gonna be palpating the site of insertion. So if this was inserted here, I would be palpating around for any crepitus. And that's, um, if you've heard of the Rice Krispie sound, uh, that's the subcutaneous emphysema. So if I'm pushing on there and I'm hearing that kind of snap, crackle, pop, that could mean that there's some fluid in the subcutaneous layer and that there's a leak at the site. Sometimes the providers aren't going to do anything about that. They might ask you um, to dress the dressing a little bit tighter. They may come in and actually put a stitch there, but you'll just wanna make sure that the provider knows about that. 
assessing vitals, I'll put what we already said. While someone has a chest tube in, they will have a chest x-ray done every day. So you'll be monitoring their chest x-ray results and you'll be um, treating any pain. So for some patients, it's very painful at the site there. For some, it's not painful at all. So you'll have to assess their pain and treat it accordingly. Now, nursing interventions will include having the patient change their position frequently. That will help, especially if the patient has a chest tube in to remove drainage. So as we're moving around, that's gonna help the fluid move uh, so it can be in sucked out through that drainage tube. Higher semi-fowler's positioning will help with Eric's lung expansion, um, perfusion, coughing and deep breathing, instead of spirometry, all of that is gonna help prevent any atelectasis. Same with ambulation. Treat the pain like we said, and dressing care will, will be determined per your, your hospital site and your provider. Another thing you wanna make sure you never do is what's called milking the tube, and that's where you're kinda of going like this, trying to push any fluid, clots, anything that's in the tubing down. You can move the tubing to help kind of facilitate drainage, but you never wanna do any clotting. That increases the um, intrapleural pressure and it can actually damage the lungs. You wanna make sure you don't do that. Now, chest tubes do come out on accident. Sometimes uh, a confused patient might pull it out, patient might forget they have a chest tube and start walking to the bathroom and pull it out or it just accidentally gets um, stuck on something. So. If a chest tube does come out, that is considered a medical emergency. So you would be uh, calling for help, activating your rapid response team, whatever your, your hospital site has. And at your bedside, for any patient who has a chest tube, you should always have what's called um, Vaseline gauze or petroleum gauze. Put this on a package like this. Gauze and pressure tape. So, if this chest tube were to come out, so we'll say the chest tube was right here, I'm going to hurry up, get my gloves on, call for help, open up this Vaseline gauze, and you can see it's very sticky. It's impregnated with Vaseline. I'm gonna slap that over the site, get my gauze, cover it with gauze, several, and then put pressure tape over it. So I wanna have a pressure tape with an occlusive dressing over this site to help prevent any more collapsing of that lung. And so I'll do that, and as I'm doing that, hopefully other help has arrived, and then I'm going to begin looking at their oxygenation status. Do I need to put oxygen on them? Are they doing okay? Are we thinking about initiating a code here? What is going on? And every patient will respond differently because maybe They've had the chest tube in for several days and it, it's, it could have come out today and taking it out won't make a difference. For others, it could be that it was just inserted and now um, the lung has, has collapsed and they are unable to oxygenate and we have perfusion problems. So it will depend on the patient, but making sure that these are always at the bedside for every chest tube patient is extremely important in the event of that emergency. And that concludes our information about chest tubes.